All right, just in case later on you want to follow some of the examples, you forgot the steps, you can go back to play that video. All right. So I want to talk about three things. Number one, uh, some of the really basic fundamental stuff about Android Studio, uh, Android development. Number two, I want to continue to talk a little bit more about that idea I didn't finish last time. I want to show you some of the project or student made in the past uh, two or three years so that you can probably better uh, you know, get some inspiration and, and, new, uh, and new ideas. And then finally, I want to move a uh, little bit more on the UI and the layout stuff so that we can talk in detail some of the basic layout you need to know and how do we use that, some of the properties and how this everything works. Okay, so let's start from the basic things. I gave you a little bit, you know, tutorial last time on how do you run and create your first app. So let's do that again. All right, so open your Android Studio. I'm going to create a new project. So this is something I will always recommend. So I'm going to talk a lot about the, the best code practice. Now, first of all, you have app name. Always give a very meaningful name, okay? Don't use my application one, two, three, you know, test one, two, three. All right, give a very meaningful name. Now, my very first one is going to be, um, you know, basic Android, um, you know, app, demo app. All right, this is always a good practice because, you know, if you just go with the test app, my first program, Hello World program, later on it's, it's become very difficult for you to manage. Um, and also the, the domain, okay, so in Java you should know it's a good conven uh, coding convention that you use your organization's domain name as your package name. And then we use the reverse order, right? So this should be something you already learned in Java. So for example, we have, a, uh, if, if for Google, all right, so their domain name is google.com. And then inside Google, their developers, they are going to uh, package, use a package name for their Java code, something like com, dot Google, and then something else. So for example, they're making maybe Google Maps app. I'm just guessing, okay, they probably call it a Maps. They made another Java program for, um, uh, you know, machine learning, and they will use the same dot, dot, uh, uh, com dot Google dot ML. All right, so that's the code convention. So the package name in Java is not something random. So that's why here uh, in Android Studio, they explicitly ask you your domain name. So, um, but that, that had to be reversed. So that's why I do a cs499.cpp.edu. And then that's why the package name you see here, they do edu.cpp.cs499. And then this one here is a long name. Now this, this name is a little bit too long, okay, so not that professional. So I'm going to edit this, and then I'm going to change it to be just a demo app, all right, and that. So the package name, um, how do you name it, how do you describe it, really shows how professional you are. You don't want to give, like, an example, test, my app, my first app, this kind of names. All right, next. So this one here I talked about last time, all right? So 5.0 sounds like a good version. The higher, the easier for you to develop. For, the higher, the better for the developers. But then the problem is the higher, the less users you can cover, right? So you need to find a balance. So 5.0, 5.0 gave you a pretty good balance in terms of the coverage and also the ease to develop. All right, and then for now, I wouldn't check this one, all right? So let's just stick to some of the style I, I'm using, unless you, you're pretty familiar with the new features, the new structures. I'm gonna just uncheck this one. It doesn't affect you too much. And click on next, all right? Now, it, you, when you first time look at it, last time I showed you, I used this basic activity. This looks like a pretty nice template. And some others even fancier. For example, if you wanna do a bottom navigation app, this one looks like give you a very good code base or things like this and that, it's more complicated. Now the good thing about using this template is they give you a lot of a starting code base for you to use. And of course, these are very good code, the code that follow best practices. And, but in my experience, if you are not that familiar with Android, um, I wouldn't recommend you use too much existing code because, for example, if you choose this one, you're gonna find a lot of classes already there and they already wrote a lot of code, they use some of the new classes it's kind of too much and overwhelming for you to understand everything in the beginning, right? So it's not good for you to learn it in the very beginning. So if this is the first time you learn Android, you're not that familiar and experienced with Android, I would highly recommend you go with something really simple, which is this one, all right? 
So I would recommend you always start with an empathy activity, unless you are super familiar with all the code base, what they do, what they provide it, and you can choose others. All right. So empathy activity, and then here activity name, and I wouldn't change the main. You know every. Uh, so first of all, what is activity? Activity in Android. That's the very first concept you need to learn. An activity means one screen. All right. Every screen you see in the app in Android. That's called an activity. Now the activity has always always has two components. One is the UI, the other is the code behind it, where you, you can control how you interact with the users. So, but ag activity is the one term that that you know basically includes everything about the screen you see, the screen you can interact with. All right. So that's why they ask you to provide an activity name, and the, the default, the very first one, should be main activity, just like your main method. That's going to be your entrance. To your uh, to your app, and of course, an app can have multiple activities, and there are different ways to organize activities. You can have one activity for each screen, or you can also have fewer activity, maybe only one or two activity, but you can still have multiple screens by using something called a fragment. All right, so we'll talk about fragment later on. Now, using fragment is something Android has been suggesting in the past years. But in the very beginning, forget about fragment. Okay, just focus on activity. Now, every time if you need to create a new screen, let's just create a new um, activity. All right. By default, I'm going to use the main activity name. All right. So that's it. Let's finish that. All right, so this time, if you remember, last time we used this template app where you have a floating button, we had a lot more code. But this time, this main activity class only had one method on create and only two lines of code. This is very good for us because it's a brand new paper. We can just do whatever we want and test whatever we want. It's easier for you to learn. Otherwise, I gave you too much code. You just don't know how the code are affecting your app. All right, now let's review this one more time. On the left hand panel, I talk about the four different types of things you need to know for each of your Android project. Number one, the Java folder. Okay, that's all your Java source code where those source code are seated. So main activity, this is one and only one Java source code right now, one class. And then you have resource folder. Resource folder contains some of the images, some of the uh, fonts, some of the data files. And more importantly, you have the layout. We'll talk a lot about the layout today. So basically, that's what your screen looks like. You have to specify, I need buttons, I need uh, text box, I need text views, I need drop-down menus. And how do I arrange them? How do I layout them, align them? Right. So everything has been configured in a layout configuration file. So that's also part of a resource. All right. Besides these two most important components, you have the third component, which is called manifest. So manifest file is more kind of a configuration file. It's kind of a metadata file that gives you the high-level definition for your app. For example, the name of your app, the icon of your app, uh, the uh, uh, activities. So for example, you, you will be able to find um, every single activity you have. In other words, every single screen you have, you will have a definition right here and, and, and in the manifest file. Okay. So if you have five screens, you have to declare those five activities in this file. All right, so you're gonna come back to this file each time you make a add a new uh, uh, screen. All right, so we'll we'll talk more about it. For now, don't worry about the syntax. Everything is pretty easy to work with. Basically, use a standard XML format, and then you just need to know how do you uh, include and contain the right element and change the properties. And then lastly, the fourth component you need to know is this Gradle script. I told you, don't worry about all the other files. You just need to work on this second one called module colon app. So this is the main Gradle script you will need that configures most of the things related with how to build your app. When we talk about the build, it doesn't mean we code. It means how do we manage the different files, how do we compile them and put them together. Because as you can see in this project, you have so many files in your project folder. But eventually, when, when users download your app, they're only going to download one single file. So we need to know how do we put everything together into that one single file. So this Gradle does that job for us. So this Gradle actually specifies some of the version, version name, and the code name, and also some of the dependencies. I'll talk about later on 
when we start to talk about more advanced features, you can't really write everything from scratch by yourself. You need to use a lot of third-party dependencies libraries. So that's when you your dependency here to uh, import some of the external functionalities into your app. Okay, so this one we will touch it, um, you know, periodically, whenever we need to add something new. But the most of the time, you spend your time here and here. And then there's always order. We all, always like to start from the resource because you need to specify the UI first, and after that, we go to the code and to make some changes. All right. So this is just a quick review on the four components you need to know about the Android. So don't be uh, you know, overwhelmed by, by all the different files. But then, you know, most of the time you will find that you're only going to work on this part, this area. This one, just some of the minor configuration, this one is the same. All right, any questions? Very good. Now, I want to start my emulator first um, while we are uh, talking about something else. All right, I highly recommend General Motion. It's going to be super faster uh, than the default uh, Android emulator. So I'm going to start. I'm using the Google Pixel 2 phone with Android 8, one of the latest versions. All right. So that's the first kind of a topic you need to know, the Android project structure. All right, so this one basically talk about the same thing. All right, so let's actually start to make a new app. All right, so to, to give you a kind of better feeling on how Android development works. Last time we just used a template, you know, it's not really the code we wrote, but this time let's do the complete flow and, and you know, uh, have a better kind of experience. Now this app comes from this book, the textbook I mentioned, The Big Nerd Wrench, and this is a little quiz app. So in the center of the screen, I'm going to show a question, um, and you can do any question. And I have two buttons below it, one true, one false. And of course, if you click on true, I'm going to determine if you answer that correctly or not. So of course, I need to know the answer so that I can check your answer, your click. If you're answering correctly, I'm going to pop up a little message at the bottom saying it's correct. Otherwise, I'll see it's incorrect. All right, super simple app. So let's do it. Now, remember, I, I briefly mentioned, if you want to make an app, all right, obviously, this app has one single screen. Um, there are always two steps. Number one, always work on the UI first, the skin first. You want to make sure something is viral first. Otherwise, you know, there's not much you can do. You don't know how to interact. You can't interact. So you have to put all the buttons, all the text there first so that you can work with your code. All right, so that's the first step. And after that, we go to the Java code to implement some of the controls, some of the logic, what happened, all the interaction, those stuff. All right, always two things. That's why, come back to the uh, Android Studio, I told you, you always need to work on these two components, so always start from resource. And more specifically, you always want to start from this thing called the layout. All right. So by default, since they create this main activity uh, for you, so you already have a layout file for this activity. So if you double click open this, now you should be able to see there is a default text color word in the center of the screen. And um, you can start to work on top of those. Of, of this kind of template they provided. All right, so let's make that changes. All right, so for now, you don't need to worry about how do we actually get everything working. We'll talk more in detail how do we lay out, what kind of component, how to work with the button, how do we work with the text view, all the different you know, widgets. For now, I'm gonna go through the process so that you can see how the development works. All right, come back to the design. So one sentence of a text in the center of the screen Below that, we have two buttons, all right? Now, click on this. Now, by default, they automatically open this visual editor. Basically, you know, what you see um, is, uh, how to describe this, this type of visual editor? Um, what you see is what you, you get, right? Yeah, so, so basically, uh, talking about it's a very easy experience for you to make changes. You basically just do you know, whatever it may here. For example, if I change, I click on this, and here's the text, hello world here. So I'm, and if I change that, you know, um, CPP is the largest campus in the CSU system. I hit enter. All right, so that changed. So 
So this is what, called what do you see is what you get. Um, you can basically make changes directly on this editor. All right, looks pretty simple. However, I told you last time, uh, don't do that. All right, so this is a more for the uh, non-professionals to use. Or if you make something really simple just like this, that's fine. But later on, you will see that you can't do all the complicated layout by using this editor. Okay, it is getting better and better each year when you have a new version of Android Studio, but it's still limited. All the professionals, they go specify everything about UI in the text format, which is this, all right? So in your Android Studio, this little tab here allows you to switch back and forth. Design the visual editor, text is the text editor. Professionals go to the text editor, so you guys want to be professional. So let's forget about this design tab. You're never going to use that, all right? So from now on, try to be familiar with this text editor, and in the beginning, you might feel it's kind of overwhelmed, but keep doing. I can guarantee after one or two weeks, you become very familiar with this. All right, so it's a, it's a pretty easy to work with the text definition. All right. Now, and also same time, they improve this one. So you, right now, you can basically make the changes, actually see the the result here. They didn't have this kind of feature before, so it's kind of nice. All right. So before I move on, I let me actually increase the font a little bit more. I don't know if you can see this, but let me change it a little bit. Bigger. All right. 18. All right. Is that uh, big enough? <coughs> All right. Okay. So um, let's start to work on this. All right. Now, looks like I already have the text view ready. All right. So it's called, uh, this is my first question. CPP is the largest campus in the CSU system. Pass. All right, and I need to put buttons, right? So if you look at our design right here, we need two buttons, which is pretty uh, easy. So this is how you can add a new button, and every button has a name, has a class. So I'm going to type this tag called a button. All right, as you can see, this editor has a very nice uh, auto composition feature. This is probably the, one of the best IDVs you can ever have, and the IntelliJ also good, but the Android Studio, you, you, I think, is even better. Okay, I'm sure Google also had a lot of input to that editor. So here you need to specify the, the width and the height, basically how big your button is. I'm gonna do something called wrap content, wrap content. I'm talk I'm gonna talk more about what does that mean. Alright, so right now you can see there the button show up. It's good. And then how do I put a a name on a, a text on top of the button? I do something called a text. So it's one of the properties. So if you do that again, if you type text, it's gonna auto complete that. I'm gonna say this is true. All right, now you can see that little text show up. And I use the same approach, copy and paste, do another button. This time I'm going to false. All right, now you might be wondering what happened. So I put two buttons, only one is show up. Well, obviously the two buttons are overlap with each other. Now, this is something that you should start to learn very quickly. It is about the layout. Now, by default, Android is going to give you this kind of weird default position, which is all within the very beginning, if you do not specify any layout. However, we need to, as a pro programmer, we need to tell Android how we should place align the, 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 the widgets and where we should place them. All right, so Android gives you a very powerful way to lay out stuff. That's not going to be the third topic for today. All right, so I'm here going to show you something very quick. I'm going to use something called a linear layout. All right wrap content, and then I'm going to move two of my buttons inside. As you can see, this one looks a lot better. Now you can see both buttons. And then I have to specify a little bit more. I need to specify orientation, which is horizontal, meaning I want to place the two buttons in the same row. And then also, I want to place this whole thing in the center. Okay, so uh, there are different ways to do it. So one way I can do is probably uh, to um, uh, use something else, okay? So this is a little bit more common. Let's, let me do this in two steps. Now, step one, I need to move these two buttons below this uh, text, right? Because that's what our design looks like. So let's do that first, and then we can do the, uh, uh, we can do the, uh, uh, the other one. So in order to do that, we, right now, um, again, this two, you know, this one is already centered, but then this one is on the top. 
So we need to configure something for their parent. This one here, so that the parent will control everything included, how they're going to be aligned. So to do that, I have to change the default layout. Right now, they always use this thing called constraint layout, which is kind of a new layout, but it's a little bit uh, not the traditional way to do it. So I'm going to switch that back to something easier, which will be another linear layout. So we're going to use a lot of linear layout today, but uh, for now, don't worry about the detail. We'll talk about what is a linear layout and then how that works. For the orientation, I'm going to do a vertical. All right. Now, by changing the parent layout, as you can see, it actually affects all the you know, uh, children elements included. But this is fine. Now, we just need to work on how to center everything. Now, pretty simple. Now, what we can do here is there are different ways. I can do something like uh, um, uh, for the text view, I can do a gravity, layout gravity. I do a center. All right. And then for the linear layout, I can also do a layout gravity center. Here you go. And then if I want to move this one also to the center of the screen, um, again, there are different ways. One way is I can try to change things here. I can try either a gravity center. Let me try that. Yeah. So that's the easiest way that you can place everything inside into the center of the screen. All right. Now, for now, don't don't feel like this is a complicated. Oh, how do I know to use that? How do I know to use this? There are actually certain rules that you will learn pretty quickly to teach you when do you need to use what kind of property to configure the, the uh, you know the uh, uh, the layout and the arrangement. All right. So now this looks pretty much the same as what we want to do right here. Okay. So I'm going to stop here. And other things, just to give more example, if you think the text is kind of font size too small, you can change and increase its font size. So if you go here, do a font size, sorry, text size, or just type size. And you can look through anything that you think that's, that makes sense. So the text size is this, and I'm going to change this into 16 SP. All right, so I'm going to talk more about what is SP. And then that's how you can see the text becoming bigger. All right, anyway, so this video editor is very helpful because you can see exactly how your changes are, are affecting the actual layout. But again, do not need, you know, go to here to make changes. Click on this and then use the other editor to do it. Everything should be changed by using the text uh, you know, configuration. Okay. Now, the reason is not just to show that you, you understand the code. The reason is because this file is, is easier to maintain. Okay. Otherwise, if you do this one, um, what happened is the editor will generate all the, all the code here. If the code is not written by you, but it's generated by a computer, it's very hard for you to understand why a computer generate this. So that's why it's harder to maintain um, the, the changes if you use uh, just do everything using the visual editor. All right, so let's try that. Now, once I finish this change, I'm going to run my app, make sure my, um, you know, my app looks kind of like what I expect to see. So I'm going to put this one to the side here. I'm going to run this. Check. OK. All right. And first time, this build process, OK, it's going to take a little bit of time. Depending on your computer. I have a pretty good computer, although it's two years old, but this Mac Pro computer is actually pretty good. I'm, so, but, but if yours is Windows, maybe uh, you know, more than three or four years old, it may take a while, so don't be surprised. But it's only for the first time. After that, it will be faster and faster. All right. So this this one you can see here. Uh, that's the uh, UI. Uh, looks pretty, you know, almost the same as the one they they gave you here. All right. So that that's a uh, you know good first step. But of course, right now if I click on this, click on that, nothing happens. Um, why is that? Because this one right now, all, all we have to do so far is just the the UI. The skin, um, nothing like uh, no nothing on the interaction, no logic, no code behind it. We only display, it. so that's that's why we, we, no matter what you do, you know it doesn't do anything. All right, any questions? Good. Now let's work on the interaction. So once you finish the UI, once you're satisfied with your UI, let's move on to code. All right. So now you're done with this resource folder. We can move on to the Java folder right here. So everything will be controlled in Java, all right? And then, um, so that's why you need to move on to the class file. 
Of course, every class, every uh, activity, every screen will have one corresponding Java class to control. It. So normally, if your your main act, your uh, activity is called main activity, you will have a main activity class, and then on the other hand, you will have activity main dot XML file for that layout. So this one is actually associated with this one. And how do we tell they're associated? If you read the code carefully, as you can see, the second line here in this method, set content view r dot layout dot activity main. So this one is actually talking about this layout file. So that's how Java class can know which layout I will use. Once you put this one here, later on when Android Studio is going to build your app, you're going to put these two things together. All right. So I'm going to explain our layout later. All right. So I'm going to start to write my, my my code now. What should I do? Pretty simple. I this app just allowed me to do two kind of interactions. I either click on this button or I click on that button. All right. So if I click on this button, I need to pop up a message to sh to show me it's correct or not. And the same thing for this one. All right, so that's our logic. Now, if you want to do that, so basically, first of all, you need to know, now, you are trying to, which object you want to control. In this case, I'm going to control this button. All right, now, if you want to control that button in your code, you have to get access to that button. Or you need to have a reference to that <coughs> button so that you can type some code to control it. All right, so how do we get access on the button? Because the button and everything is specified here. I can't type code here. If, if, you, if I can do code here, I probably will put some code here, right? But then that's not how it works. I have the code in Java in a different file. Then how do I uh, connect my code here with the button here? Well, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, using ID, right, very good. So first of all, you know, you need to basically give ID for every single component you want to control by program. All right, so how do we give ID? Now I go to button, I click on uh, uh, create a new file, I type ID, the very first one you see, that's what you need. All right, and then there's a category suggests that you should use this add plus ID slash set. That's what you need to do. Okay, this is how you place the ID. And ID can be anything as long as unique, but normally we should have some kind of a convention. Okay, so like in this case, the button, and it's a true button, I'm gonna call it a true button, all right? And then the other one is the same. So give ID, it's called a false button. All right, now, once these two buttons have ID, in my Java code, I will be able to find them out. And how to do it? Well, I'm gonna do something called find view by ID. Once you type find here, it will suggest that method for you. Okay, so this is the one of the method you probably will need every single time every single activity, mm -hmm. all right? Um, just looking at the name of the method, you know that Android is gonna find that view, okay? The UI component by the ID you provided, all right? So if you use this method, and obviously the input should be the ID. Now the ID, you can't really simply type this, true button or false button, that doesn't work. You have to use this thing called R dot ID dot, and then you do true button. All right, so I'll explain why this, but what it means here is in Android, you need to basically access a lot of different things. You need to access, for example, the ID, you need to access this layout, you need to access later on images, other resources. All of the resources you want to access here, since they are from the different folder, different type, you have to give specific, you know, uh, either the pass or the folder or the type you know, in Java code set so that they know, okay, you're looking at the ID, or here you're looking at the layout, or in another place you're looking at the image. So you have to give this kind of a, you know, type kind of a keyword. And then the capital R simply means resource. If you do capital R, Java will know it's going to find something from this area here, and then the resource. Okay, that's why you will see a lot of R. Okay, R dot ID dot the ID name. Okay, so this is something you will use very, very often. Okay, so uh, again, right now you may have a lot of questions. Don't worry. Let's just you know follow the code, finish it. And now you know the high level purpose of doing this. 
you're good. All of this I'm talking about, once you finish two or three apps, you will be, become very, very familiar with this. All right, that's it. Now you finish this line, now this method is gonna return you something, okay? It's gonna return the actual view for you. Now in this case, we're trying to get access to the button, so I need to save that reference. Now in Android, every single element you use, like here in the button, there will be a correspondent class name for it in Java. So that means here I can define something called a button. As you can see, once you type button, it will suggest the very first time for you. Come from the Android SDK. So I do a, a button and then give a name, true button. All right. So that's how you can um, grab that reference to that particular button. All right, now this line is pretty important. This one, sh this line shows how Android can get access uh, in Java code on some of the resource files or, or component you specify in another folder. It always follow the same process. All right, find view by ID and assign it to some kind of variable. <clears throat> That's one. And the same thing you can do button, false button, equals to the same. Font view by id, r.id.false button. When you type in this uh, Android Studio IDE, if you, if you, you know, uh, if you already use IntelliJ, you probably know it, but the, the auto completion feature in uh, Android Studio is, is very, very impressive. All right. It not only give you a very fast and then complete suggestion but more importantly, the, the, the one they suggested are, are very intelligent. Normally, the first one they suggested is the one you need. All right, so, so they're pretty smart on all of this coding. So that's why when you start coding in Android Studio, it's really, really fast. You can do it super fast. You're familiar with all the process. Okay, now, once you have uh, the, the variable, now you know it's a type of a button, and then we can do things, right? How? If I do true button, all right, if I click on a dot, as you can see, you will be able to get all the methods and the behaviors provided by this button. There are actually a lot. All right, there's so many things you can do for that one button. Of course, you're not gonna use most of those, all right? But if you want, that, if you just start to raise some of the methods, you probably can know, like this guess, get x, y, z, that's going to return you the co coordinates of the uh, button. Get visibility tells you whether the button is, is, is visible or not. Let's do some other things. What else? Set, uh, set foreground, the foreground color or image. Set gravity. I briefly showed you basically how do you want to like uh, align your, your content. Set height, set hint, set Lines, I don't even know what the lines mean. Uh, set max lines, probably the, the number of lines you can have at the text on top of the button. All right. So for all of this, you want to know what they do. Very easy. Just simply go and then search the Java doc. All right. So you need to know how that works. Okay. So go here. Any Android class, simply go Android button. All right, normally the very first one is the link you should take a look at. All right, click on this one. All right, so this is the official uh, Java doc for all the Android classes. So it's pretty similar to the Java doc, but they, they have an Android style, okay? So you can see they showed you all the method here available, and then you can take a look at all of this. So for example, you have, what do you have? What method? Um, Wait, it's not everything. Let me see. They probably hide the uh, the one from parent. Public method only these two. All right. So maybe maybe yeah, most of method come from the parent class and parent class. What about text view? So this one maybe have more method. 
yeah, it does have more method, more attribute. So, so like every method you can actually, for example, click on set uh, ellipse size. All right. So this is like uh, pretty useful. Sometimes you have a very long text, and you don't want to display everything on a limited space. They're gonna give you the 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 period 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 at the very end to like you can want some of the text. So this one specifies the size, and you can read the the, uh, the description to show that to, to understand how this method works. So everything you want to you want to use actually has been specified in the Java doc. That's where you can get all the help. All right. So but I just want to show you but. Everything here you need to understand how that works. However, now as I told you, you're not going to use the majority of the method here. Okay, uh, every component you're only going to use, I would say, two or three methods most of the time, unless you're doing something really special. Okay, now another good thing about Android Studio is when you do, for example, type the period, as you can see, looks like most of these are ordered by um, you know the alphabet order. Sorted by off uh, by order, but not the first three. The first one you call the set on click listener. Second one is get accessibility class name, and third one is unresolved pointer icon. All right. So the reason they do this is first of all, this two methods, the get accessibility and unresolved pointer. Now, if you remember this Java doc here, the one we just saw about the uh, button, these are the only two public methods provided by button class. So that means these two methods are very specific to buttons. All right, most of other methods come from the parent classes. That's why they, they list this one at the top because they, they believe that for the button you might need these two things very specific to buttons. All right, that's why these two actually stand out in the, in the top. And then the first one, something called set on click listener. This is more valuable. As I told you, everything suggested by Android Studio at the very top is normally the one you need, or the normally the one you should use. All right. In this case, this is probably the most frequently used method for this button uh, class. All right. So, which is what we're going to do here, because we're going to give you a logic that saying that if you click on this button, I'm going to check the answer and the pop up a message. But how do I know? When you click on that button, well, this is the method I need to. Do. All right, so I'm going to set the listener. So I'm going to click on uh, auto completion. You're never going to remember all these method names. Always use auto completion. All right, so set on click listener. Now, what should I put inside? All right, so this one is a little bit more complicated. If you are not familiar with Java, something called inner class something called anonymous inner class. How many of you can explain, can anyone explain what is anonymous inner class in Java? A method inside a method, inside a class. Okay. Some of you probably know what I'm talking about, but you just don't know how to, how to use your own words to, to, to define it. All right, so I'm gonna talk more about that. So let's take a look at how do we use this, all right? So this is not a regular parameter, okay? Because like, like this one, you provide ID, you understand. This one, the ID is very simple. This one, you need to provide a lot more information because you want to tell, well, if you click on this button, I'm going to check the answer, I'm going to display this. You're going to put more code inside. But how do we do that? So first of all, let's take a look at this definition. All right, so let's Google it. I come back here. And I can start to find out that method. So, so this one should be somewhere in the in the view. Okay. All right. Here's the method. Set on click listener. That's the one we're using. Now let's take a look at the Java dot. What we need to provide. All right. So we need to provide something called view dot on click listener. That's the type. So what is this? Let's click on this. Click on this on click listener. Well, looks like this is a interface. So you have to provide some kind of implementation for that interface. So what this interface specify is there's one method called onClick and view, and then this is the abstract. All right. So I assume you all are familiar with all this interface stuff. I know some of you probably forget, but if you are in another 356 class, we'll talk about that tomorrow. 
Um, but anyway, this is the interface. That means that when you are passing your input to here, you have to provide a concrete implementation for that interface. Okay, that's when you need to use the inner class. But you do not have to define that class with a name. That's when you need to use anonymous inner class. Anyway, let's come back to that definition later, but I want to show you how do you type this, okay? Since this one needs that interface, if you don't know how to do it, that's fine, all right? So we're going to try auto completion. If you try to click on control and space, uh, it's not there. Well, then you have to do this, new control space. All right, so that one, it will, it will figure out what type to use. Because this message explicitly asks you to provide unclick the listener. And then if you try to create that instant and, and implementation, and you will have this. And then simply hit enter or double click, they will auto complete this very complex structure for you. Okay, so you're never going to remember how to write this, or you don't have to type every single character one by one. Always rely on the auto completion. Let me do this one more time. All right, you, you need this every time. New space, control space, and hit enter. So that's it. And if you see this, probably looks more familiar to you. But this type of a structure in Java is called anonymous inner class. First of all, the thing here you, you, you wrote is a class, but you don't have a class name. That's why it's called anonymous. And then it actually implements this interface called onclick listener. All right. But anyway, as you can see, this one here allows you to type more code inside. So that's how you can pass all these actions to this, um, to this uh, unclick event. So if you click on the button, I'm going to run some code right here. All right. So let's verify that. Uh, I can do something. Let's try this. I'm going to do something called system.all.print. Click. And then I'm going to run this. All right, so I'm going to click on true button. Every time I click, I don't really see anything printed. Now, uh, we're going to talk about how can you see these messages. All right, first of all, this system dot all, that's probably the way the most commonly used statement you, 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 you do in Java where you see the result. But in Android, normally we don't do it, but you can still do it. Now, in order to find out that print, you need to go to something called a log cat. All right, as you can see, there's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, let's not worry about what it is. But now, if I start to click on a button, as you can see, every time I click, it shows a click. All right, I click on again. I don't know why there's a lot of lags. Yeah, it, it's not lag. It's just that you know some the, the, the logs are lagged, but each time you click, there will be more uh, clicks shows up right here. Okay, so that proves that every time I click on a button, this piece of code will be executed. Okay, so this is how this whole embed system works in Android. Because think about the reason we do the Android do this is because Android does never know when the user is going to click on that. So when you program this, you have to tell Android beforehand. If someone click on this button, I'm going to do this. So you give everything as kind of event handler, or in other words, it's called listener. So to tell Android that please listen on this event, please listen on somebody if somebody click on the button. Now if they do, now run this piece of code I gave you in the inside the listener. All right. But now let's check. Let's do the actual uh, logic, right? So if you click on the true button, this one here, is that a correct or incorrect answer? Is it true? Anyone else? Have you seen any uh, articles or anything? Is our campus the largest one? No, I don't think we're the largest one. Probably not. 
Yeah, I, I, it's probably one of the top three, but but probably not the first one. All right. Never mind. I'm I'm gonna assume it's not the first one. So uh, not not the largest one. So so if you click on true, that means you're wrong. Okay. I'm gonna show a message. Now let's show a nicer message instead of using a system out. So I'm gonna do this one. Um, to do that, it's called a post. All right. I don't know why it's it's, it's called a post, but in Android it's called a post message. All right. So pretty easy to do. You do you type T O A S T. All right. Don't do everything by yourself because there are too many things you want to remember. You have to remember, right? So if you type this, you can see this suggests two things. All right, one is that the class, toast class, which is part of the Android. The second one is a toast, and then there is a text called create a toast. And you can see the cursor they automatically highlight this one because they believe that's probably the one you will use, which is true. I can tell you nobody is going to create a toast class. Normally, when you type toast, you are going to actually make a toast message. So that's why when you see that, just click on enter. All right, it, it automatically gives you everything. Okay, this type of feature didn't came two years ago. Like two years ago when we were talking about Android, I have to like manually type post dot with text, all of this stuff. But the Android Studio has become so advanced. I don't know if it's good or bad. For me, it's good because I, I, I know how to do it. And all the way I feel it's getting better and better. But for, for if this is the first time you, you learn Android probably, Later on, you will find out you rely too much on, on this help, but which is okay. Um, but anyway, this this method basically shows that toast message. They automatically even figure out what you should provide to have the input. All right. So pretty easy to understand. In if if you want to make a text, or right, I'm I'm gonna delete this. So toast, click on dot. There is one method, or actually two methods for you to use. Make called make text. Now make text. They need three parameters. The first one is called a context. Context is basically where you want to show that message. In this case, it's going to be my activity, my main activity. So I'm going to do a main activity dot this. The second one is the actual message. What kind of message you want to show? I want to show a string. Incorrect. And the third parameter is the duration, how long you want the message to be displayed. And then it, it, it asks give you ask you to provide an integer, but in fact they ask you to provide a kind of a constant. So you can do a toast dot short. And that's it. And after that, th this one gives you object, then you do another dot and then you call it a show. That's how you can complete this. Alright, so this is how you do it manually. But of course, if you want to know wh why you put this one, how do I know there's a short? Well the answer is you have to look at Java dot. Okay, so I, I, let me try this. Make a text. So go here. Android toast. All right, go here. Find out Android. Uh, make text. This one here. So this one asks you for three parameters. This duration it tells you either length short, length long. That's how you can learn it. Okay, I I can't tell that. Okay, but you have to rely on everything. Rely on the actual Java doc. Java doc gives you everything. All right, so that's it. Now let's try this again. Click on true. All right, there's a, there is an in, in, incorrect, uh, much nicer message, and then it dis uh, disappear. Do the same thing. All right, for the false, false button. Dot, first method set on quick listener, and I can't remember new space. Control space. All right, and then toast. Create a new toast. This one is the default. This one is called correct. That's it. If you are familiar with the the whole process, the, this whole coding process is uh, very nice. Okay, I, I really enjoy it. Especially sometimes you do too much in Eclipse, you come back here, you feel so good, and then when you come go back to Eclipse, you know it's. Uh, it doesn't feel that good. Um, so now if you click on false, that gives you a correct. All right, click on true, that's incorrect. All right, any questions?
All right. Now another thing uh, to know is so I I have been talking a little bit about this whole build process. All right. So here I think I have one slide to show you uh, some of the basic concept. Now first of all I want to highlight again. Now uh, this is already something we talked on Monday. Android the whole OS. Okay. So you have all these components in different layers. The ones we're building is actually right there. This is a little quiz app. That receives a top level uh, by using a lot of SDKs and libraries. What is a library? For example, that toast is a part of the library. We didn't implement how to display that little message. Android already provided it for us. So you basically use that message and call it. So that's just called user library. All right. And then how is Android apps being built? All right. So I, I showed you there are so many files. Eventually, you only have one file, which is the APK file. All right, let me first show you the APK file. So this is your project. You want to find your project folder. Okay, so I'm going to open my file finder. So that is in my workspace, CS499, Summer 18, and this one is called a basic Android demo app. All right, now this is your project folder. You can see so many files, Gradle file, app, fo app, fo app folder, Gradle, I open app there, are build, library, source, source there, Java, main, manifest, everything here. Now, you should be able to find something under uh, the folder build. And then finally, you have outputs, not outputs, generated, intermediates, temp. Um, I saw they're going to output something in the outputs. Let me, let me double check. Or they may they may change the way they they generate all the stuff. Okay, but but we can explicitly ask Android to build it. Alright, so I'm gonna click on build, and then click on rebuild project. Alright, once that is done, let me double check here. Yeah, so now you have this folder called APK. So that's the file being generated by uh, by the uh, Android Studio. This APK file, as you can see, it's 1.6 megabytes, a pretty big file, um, because that file contains everything in this folder. But then the way it works is, so, because you have all different resource files, so you have that resource folder, uh, the XML files, you have manifest file, you have Java file right here, and I told you the way you can connect the two components to use that R class, resource class that, that R class is going to find out all the single files. Um, but then for the Java part we use JVM to compile Java, generate class files. And then on the other hand they compile the resources, but eventually they just combine them together and merge them into one file called APK file. The APK file is basically a package that has everything. And then finally for the render app you just run that APK file. Or if I send that APK file to, to you through email, you can open that on your phone and then you can also run it. Okay. So the APK file is just like your EXE file in Windows. All right. So it's executable on the Android phones. And you can install it, you can, uh, you can run it. One interesting thing you should know is, even though we are writing the code in Java, but Android, for some reason, didn't use a standard uh, Java SDK. Okay. So so the standard Java is right now owned by Oracle, right? Previously by Sun. Um, the right now is Java nine, but Android they use uh, this this Dolby kind of Java you know, JVM. Um, I don't know it's about IP issues or other other issues. I didn't really look into too much, but they are not standard Java. So most of the time you don't see the difference. Sometimes when you build, you may have something you know special to to take care of, but. It doesn't matter too much for most cases, but you should know that they use a different kind of JVM compiler. Right? Probably because of their Android, some of their special things they did. Right? But that, that's what happened every time when you click on run, that process has been uh, triggered. So that's why this process actually takes long, especially for the first time. Now, in order to you know, make the debug pretty fast, so Android Studio has made a lot of progress, especially this feature called Instant Run. So I think instant run came in Android 2. And basically, sometimes if you only make a simple change, they're not going to rebuild everything like I'm showing here. 
Okay, so they will only pick one or two steps and then and then somehow to inject the changes so that the whole build and reg execution process is faster. So that is called instant run. Okay, so if you see the term, that's basically what it means. Uh, especially if you had done the old Android Studio, you will know that each time it's going to take the same amount of time. But right now, some of the changes it goes, goes almost instantly, so, which is nice. All right, so that is the, um, uh, how the process has been built. Another thing, the third one you should know about fundamentals I want to talk about in the beginning is about this logging. All right? I just showed you how this system all still works in the Android. All right? But you should never do that in the Android. It's a very non-professional way, unprofessional way to do it. All right? Nobody writes system out in the Android. Even though you can see the message, but that's not the, the right way to do it. And then your question, how do we display the message? Well, you're not going to use the toast, all right? The so toast is too expensive. You, and also, sometimes you don't want to show a lot of toast if it's just for the debug purposes. So you're still going to use some kind of a text output in the console, um, but you have to do that through the logging utilities provided by Android. So Android has a lot of logging things for you to do, all right? And then if you use the logging, you probably already know how it works. It's just the same way. But if it is the first time you use the logging, now, first of all, the logging means the same thing as the print. Basically, you want to output something to somewhere so that you can see that message. But normally, when we talk about logging, it will have one very important feature, uh, which is the, the logging levels. All right. So, like you can see here, the log levels, I have you know, very typical five levels verbose, debug, info, information, warning, and error. By reading this, you probably can tell error that's the highest level. And warning is a little bit, you know, uh, better than, than error. And then you have information, debug verbals. So the higher the level is, the more serious that message, that logging is. So you should pay more attention if you see an error or if you warning. But if this information is only for debug and verbals, probably you do not need to care too much. All right. So that is log level. Uh, once you know that log level, whenever you, you try to output a log or a message, you need to specify which level you should send to. All right, because this is something more professional. And in general, you only do system dot all. All right, but which is fine. But in the future, when you have too many things to print out, now let me show you, just like the phone here, right? Take a look at how many messages are being output here. Uh, if I start to use the phone, you will see more. Um, if I go to the system process, yeah, there are tons of messages being printed out every single time. But um, we need to kind of be able to filter out some of the messages to be able to see um, what we want to use. So every time we output some message, you should give a level. All right. I can show you if you read every line, like if you see an I, that means information. If you see a D, that means debug. E is error and W is warning. As you can see, if it's, a, it's an error, it's going to be marked as red. Okay, and then and then otherwise it's going to be black. So different levels tell you how important it is. If you see something in red, that's always not a good thing. So you should actually take care of that red. Okay. Now because of so much messages, Android Studio allows you to either the filter this. So if you click on this drop down button, as you can see. It shows you all of these levels, um, but you know, remember that this doesn't work by like if you click on information, for example, all right. As you can see, you see not just the information, but also you still see error, you still see the warning, all right. The filter works by only showing the messages at that level or above. Okay, so if you click on information, that means you want to hide the 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 messages at debug or verbals. And then if you want to do a warning, then you're only going to see warning and error. That's how it works. Or you only want to see error, but then you basically have to choose error. Or everything, only error will show up. And then if you do a debug, you're going to see everything from debug information to warning and error. Okay, there are five levels you normally use. All right. So if you understand this, when you try to output some information, you have to decide which level to use. For example, in Java, if you have some kind of exception going on, 
then you should use at least that one. Okay, because you need to have users to noti notify and know there's something wrong. But if you just print out something, you know, maybe here is a good example. If I want to just show, you click on this button. This is not really that important. I can do something called debug. Okay, so let me try this. In order to uh, log a message, you're going to do this class called log, capital L, and then do a dot, and you will have all of this message. As I mentioned, I'm going to use the debug, so I'm going to do a, something called a D, this one here. And then at least you need to provide two um, inputs. One of them definitely is a message. So for example, I'm going to do um, the true button has been clicked. All right. But then you also need one more thing called a tag as a first parameter. All right. And tag just allows you to give one more um, name for your message just for you to easily to you know, uh, filter it. So for example, this message is more about UI, so I can see put a tag called a UI. All right. And then here I can do the same thing. Log dot, I can try a different one. I can try the uh, information level. Tag is UI. Message, the false button has been good. All right, so now let's try it. I'm going to run my app. All right, now if I click on this true button, I need to switch this one to watch my app. All right, so. All right, so now if I click on true button, where is the message? Oh. Alright, false has been shown the true. Why oh, I'm using what oh you saw it? Oh yeah yeah, sorry, sorry. For some reason it's kind of a lag. Let me try it again. Yeah, it's not. It's just a, more messages. Click on true. Yeah, that that it's not just one message, that's too much. And then false, right? So that's a good thing. That's why that's when you need to use a tag. For example, you, right now I have a tag called UI. I can actually filter the message by typing UI. Or you will only be able to see those. And let me clear this. Well, it's kind of a slow here. I don't know why. But if I click on true, all right, you can see this true, and then false, false, false. Yeah, it's, it's really slow for some reason. I don't know why. All right. And also, I, it's like the, the false has been logged at the information. True has been logged at the debug level. So right now, I've, I'm using debug, so that's why you can see both. But if I only do information, you can only see the information level. The other one will be hiding. All right. So remember, this log is going to be your friend in Android Studio. All right, very important because in many cases you want to verify things, you want to check status, you can't use the system out. Okay, so it's not going to work very well because you can't filter out the information. You need to use log, you need to give a level, and give a very meaningful tag. You want to, you know, classify uh, all the relevant information together using the same tag so that you can easily filter them out. All right, uh, knowing how to use a log and the, you know, in a very professional way is, is, is pretty important as an Android developer. All right, any questions? Okay, uh, let, let's actually take a three minute break. Okay, I'm gonna stop this recording.